Evening everyone, dilly dilly, I hope you're well. I am now. <laughs> Good evening everybody. And uh, hey, I've got to give, give you this one, Swamp Thing. Tony Dixon, first through the door as you say mate, absolutely brilliant, well done, well done mate. Mike Cotton, that's unlike you mate, waiting. I can't believe you've done that, you're normally like, like a rat, rat up a drain pipe. But as Tony says, just make sure you're all keeping two metres apart. And Eileen Rutter, you were in next. I did spot that. Tim Perry, you were in next as well. Even everyone dilly dilly looking forward to this we weekend. I bet you are. I really bet you are. Uh, and Nige up from up uh, Alton Parkway. Uh, gin stocks replenished, I hope. You know me, mate. You know that I'm not going to let that one slide. Well, uh, you see it across the bottom. I'm not doing this show alone. We've got a couple of guests from the visiting championships coming up shortly as well. But I'm not actually there this weekend. I'm commentating at Brands Hatch on American Speed Fest. So I'm uh, already sort of pre-booked somewhere else. But the man who's uh, leading from the uh, the main commentary box is joining us tonight. It's Clive Woodward. Hello, mate. Evening all. I hope you're all well. Um, I was telling Chris earlier, I've had to join in the drinking. <laughs> and this mug is the first time I've ever tried Guinness in my bad Toro, which is normally reserved for uh, bitter. But um, yeah, looking forward to this weekend. It should be uh, great stuff. 22 races, so that'll keep me and I'm sure all of you pretty busy. It's going to be busy, isn't it, mate? Definitely. Uh, but I know that it's going to be a belter, isn't it? I mean, we know what our stuff brings, but to throw into it classic touring cars and the keep, I mean, wow. Yeah, some lovely uh, some lovely cars going, and there'll be some great sights, some Mustangs and uh, loads of Cortinas, Minis, TVRs, MGAs, all those sort of things. So, yeah, it should be, should be great. Um, it's sort really of race I really enjoy, actually, because in a way they are very much geared for the amateur competitor. Um, but nonetheless, they are very, very competitive and they drive them really hard, which is what everyone wants to see, of course. They 100% they do. I, I, I've covered these guys and a few other bits and pieces and uh, it's going to be interesting. So we're going to go through the entry lists. I've kind of, uh, it's weird for me, is obviously you're on because you're the man that's preparing as leading the comms team, which includes Ian Salmon over at Old Paddock and Josh Barrett doing the interviews. But I've kind of like uh, at least half prepared, if not more for this, even though I'm not going to be there so that we can do this show. But... It, we, we, it, absolutely, too right. Uh, ben Hindle says, uh, evening everybody, Jin Jin, Dorsey, you know it, dilly dilly people. Uh, Chris James says, good evening. By the way, at quarter past seven, and I believe I've been told it's like on the dot, we've got uh, uh, John Pearson and I think Rob Cull as well from uh, Equip uh, Classic Racing. And then they've got to be away by 7.30. They're actually in the paddock right now. So we're hoping that their signal is okay. So bear with us if that doesn't work out. But fingers crossed they're going to be able to join us from their motorhome in the Castle Coon paddock. So we'll wait and see how that one plays out. Jackie Jenkins. Hi, everyone. Hello there. Alan Hamilton. Smile and thumbs up. But how much of a thumbs up, mate? Because we see you're not on the entry list. I'm guessing you've not been able to repair the, uh, the beast. Yeah, that's Let a shame. Us... That's a shame. Yeah, let us know if there's any chance that's going to be a late entry or whether, you know, if you're out now, but we could see you later, you know, if you've got an idea when, because obviously it would be great to see you back, mate. Uh, you know we'll miss you. Uh, Lynn Bates, good evening, everyone. Dilly dilly, looking forward to being at Castle Coombe at the weekend. Uh, absolutely. Darren Duffield, who's going to be out in his mini again. Hello, Chris and Clive. Evening Hi, Darren. Morning. Uh, Lewis Bird, evening all. Dilly dilly, I'm hoping for a great couple of races. Good luck with that, mate, and uh, and keep that one going. I haven't looked, actually. Is, is your dad out as well? I meant to sort of check that one because I know he had a bit of an off onto the infield, didn't he, uh, on, on the last one? Uh, yeah, oh, he is. Good, man. Your dad's back out as well. That's what I like to see. Paul Bird. Uh, Carl Alden, evening all. Uh, Chris Ignor says, evening, doors and everyone. Could you mention the Mike Groom photo competition open to everyone at Coombe? Send me or Mike Good any interesting images by Facebook Messenger. Thanks. There we go. Done. And I shared uh, uh, the image on that. So get your photographs. Get them sent in. It is a competition and I've got to be part of the judging panel. What do I know about photos? <laughs> it's one I'm that the... grabs you, Chris. One that grabs you. That's my wife in it, normally by the throat, but there we go. <laughs> 
Forzy, uh, he's uh, he's going to be racing this weekend. We were just chatting about that earlier. Um, although I think, to be fair, Richard, you're Alex Forza's dad these days, rather than the other way around, mate. You know, he's racing in the likes of British F three F three Cup and what have you. We'd have loved to have seen him the other weekend. Um, oh. We could have been a challenge for the lap record. Uh, oh, missed one. Goose, evening. Looking forward to the weekend, but not the rain, which typically is forecast hardcore all the way. Shh. We don't we don't talk about it. <laughs> uh, just racing. Is there a listing for the sports racing challenge? The other entry lists are on the CCRC site. Uh, I thought they yeah, were all on, up there. It's on the Castle Coombe. It's on the same as the other entries. There are not that many of them. So it's but is it is it up on the website? Because I obviously sent you an email with them on, but I hadn't. No, it's on the website as well. I believe. Okay. okay. I think it's underneath the saloon cars. You'll find them. Fine. Keep scrolling through. They should be up there. The problem is, is that a big contingent would be coming over from Ireland from the, what do we call them again? The Global Lights, isn't the it? Global Lights, yeah. But I think we've still got challenges with getting them over, but it'll still be awesome to watch the speed of those uh, coming around as well. Solly, Brian Soul, evening, May. I bet you're going to be busy again this weekend as always. Richard Four says, whoops, on my way home from Silverstone, sent before, sent before finish the message. You're always early, mate. You're always early. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Beardy, busy weekend ahead, uh, ahead, folks. Should be a cracker, absolutely. Hi, uh, and I like to see that. Graham Collins says British Autograss at Stroud last weekend, two day at Coombe this weekend. Some sort of normality returning. Yeah, I was uh, I was at Snetterton last weekend, including on Sunday covering the twelve hour uh, Ford car, the Enduro car. Twelve hours of commentating on Sunday. Wow! wow. After well, doing the that... Saturday as well, I was I was tired. <laughs> I was at um, Vista Aerodrome. Um, Alpha Owners Club were there. Um, I've got an old 76 Alpha Spider, which I've had 40 years, would you believe? And um, there were 1,000 Alfa Romeos there. Really? <laughs> yeah, 1,000, yeah. I don't know how many got home, mind. I was about to say, I bet the RAC were busy, weren't they? That was hilarious. On the exit was an AA van. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah, so it's been, it is getting back to normality. So I was there for that last weekend. Brands out for American Speed Fest with Euro NASCAR this weekend. Uh, then I'm at Donington next weekend for British GT. And then, and then, oh, I, I think coming up, I got a new one that I'm covering the, uh, the live stream for the Dick Mayo Sprint. So I'm looking forward to that. That's a new one for me. Uh, cool. and we got Summer Action Day coming up as well soon at Coombe. What's a Dick Mayo sprint when it's at home? It's uh, Bristol Motor Club uh, running a sprint at Castle Coombe. Um, oh, yeah. from, from pit exit up round and then it ends... Um, Past Old Paddock's sort of way somewhere? It, it, further than that, it's it's between Bobby's and Camp, sort of halfway oh. between those two. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I should be covering that and autumn. And then I think I'm taking a break for a week or so and then back to British GT again. I can't remember. It's mental now. <laughs> I know that much. Alan Hamilton says, I'm afraid the car is not ready as we had a problem getting the 16-gauge metal for the new chassis. At present, and hopefully, I will be collecting the car next Thursday. Good news. Good. So what's that? Is that end of August would be the next race meet? 30, bank holiday Monday, 30th of August? Bank holiday Monday, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the one. You should be ready for that. Yeah. Ben Hindle says, got my brolly packed. Good man. I think that's wise. Brian Soul says, he's only got five cars that he's running this weekend. Solely Motorsport are, are busy these days. And doing very well, too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and elsewhere as well. So, fair <laughs> shout. Richard Ford says, can't wait to race with David Alexander in his Elite and Alpha. Disappointed you're not there. That's presumably me. Can't he doesn't mean anything by that, by the way. It's just because we're good mates, and he knows that I'd abuse him while he's commentating. Frankly, I'd just take the mick out of him because he's a good lad. Uh, can't wait to race at this great friendly track, and he genuinely means that. He's really looking forward to that. I know it. Um, oh, that's okay. Just racing says, "Oops, found it, silly Billy." Good. I was worried we were going nuts. Oh, there we go. Andy Lawrence, the main man from uh, Bristol Motors Motor Club. I passed the autographs on the motorway. Wondered what it was. So I'll be working with Andy Lawrence for the uh, Dick Mayo Sprint. And I, I genuinely am really looking forward to that. I covered, whilst I was at Snetterton, in amongst plus the 12-hour race, we also had the um, 
which one was oh it was the lotus uh, on track sprint go around the snetterton 200 from from the pit out around the 200 so not the infield bit and then the the ending timing beam was was halfway round Coram that final sweep and then they slow down before they get to Murray's so yeah looking forward to that Jamie Peters Ennis evening guys first weekend off I presume that means in a row for me Anglesey next week snet the week after I got Anglesey coming up soon as well which reminds me because when I go to Anglesey that is with Classic Sports Car Club and I have to say somebody who's heading over there this is Joe Lukovic's last weekend with Castle Coombe Racing Club which is a rather daunting thought I have to say because of course she's kept you guys and girls all under control with the race entries and, and everything like that and I think there's uh, uh, hoping that we're going to be able to keep as, uh, as steady a ship as possible when Joe moves on to, to her next challenge. And we're going to miss you, Joe, and, and all the very, very best. I know you won't be a stranger because I do a lot with Classic Sports Car Club anyway, so I shall see you. But Good thank luck, you Jim. for everything that you've done. Absolutely. Uh, right, I'm going to pause now yeah. because... We've got our uh, short-lived uh, guest coming in. I can see him in the background. I'm just watching him, sat in their motorhome, smiling. You are smiling, boys. I'll give you that. And I'm trying to see if there's drinking hand. There is. All right. I'm gonna. Well, one of them has. I'm going to bring them on. Let's bring on John Pearson and Rob Cole. Evening, gents. Hi. Hi. Thanks for, uh, uh, thanks for inviting us. It's really good. No, oh, no, thank you for coming on, guys. I thought, who's going to be uh, better at giving us the information about what you guys are doing than, uh, than yourselves? Thank you. Yeah. You're enjoying the sun there at the moment. It's not looking quite so promising for the weekend, is it? Well, we're we're in denial at the moment. The theory is, that, you know, who knows? Yeah, who knows? It's You're two in... days away, yeah, and it's you know, it's going to be one of those things. It's going to be what it will be. So yeah. that's that's us for British motorsport, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we 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 we're, we're used to it, I guess. Yeah. So we've got uh, plenty of beer, and we've just worked out a projector for the football on Saturday night. So that's all going to work. So <laughs> legends, legends. That's what. I like. Now I'm wishing I was there even more. Now I got to tell you, that sounds cracking. Yeah, they're right. We're looking forward to it, and also uh, as a series, we've not been here for 11 years, and wow. many, many of our drivers have never been here. So uh, it's been testing today, and a few people have been out. There's a lot of people uh, who've got quieter cars are going to do a track day tomorrow, and um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting, I think, for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. and, I, and I have to say, it really will be for, with you guys there because um, I've commentated on you guys quite a lot when you'd be, like, say, part of MG Car Club meets, for example, as mm -hmm. a big one. I commentated on you at Brands Hatch with the Masters Historic. Yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, I was part of the team there. So love commentating on you guys. I keep wanting to ask Rob, do you go to support groups about your addiction to TVR? <laughs> uh, I think I need to because I'm up to five at the minute. Um, so <laughs> I think I need to. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. I think the trouble with these these cars, they get inside you, get under your skin. And I've I hooked up with my first one in 2004, and that's the one I'm racing this weekend. And I just love it. I, I would never sell it. Yeah, it'd be one of those things that I'll be tra hopefully trawling around in it when I'm 90. <laughs> can't walk and I can't see over the steering wheel, but you know. Um, yeah, I actually love them. I think they're fantastic. The so, Grand Tourers, cars, aren't uh, they? Um, oh, sorry, Clive, go on. Right, just saying, they're great cars, aren't they? Um, oh, they're, they're one of those you never feel that you've you've actually got it underneath you. If that makes sense, and yeah. that's what keeps them going because you just as you think you've got it, they bite you, and then you start you're back to square one again. So, um, and that's the challenge that I like with the car, really. Is it quite it, tough keeping them going, or are they really, relatively easy to maintain for racing? All about the preparation. I think if you if you try and sort of skimp on it, that will fall fall to pieces on you, and it will stand up to its initials, which is trouble very regularly. Um, but you know, if you if you build them right, you know, don't get me wrong. You know, I stuck it on pole at Brands Hatch earlier this year. First race, it broke the diff. You know, it, it, they just do random things at random times, but. These are 60-year-old cars now that actually have been thrashed an inch of their life every weekend. They're going to break. They're not like modern cars, you know. So you have to respect them to a degree, but you also have to expect that they, they will break. Yeah. Would it's, you like it's, an interesting, it's an interesting one with the TVR, with, with what you're in, the Grand Tura, because everybody just thinks, you know, like, oh, super powerful TVR. But it, it was quite a, of an interesting car, that, is that it can be overpowered by a lot of the cars you're competing against, actually. Oh, oh, completely. If you look at um, 
they're, they're a really interesting Masters, car. They're, Masters, right. Yeah, they're a, they're a short wheelbase, yep. but um, they've got a very wide track. So on certain tracks, they can be really twitchy, and you have to be you have to dial that out a little bit. But if you look at you know the the, the races we did at Brands, you know I was against uh, with the small engine with the Grand Chira, uh in our Libra race. I beat Falcons and Mustangs and. You know, so you can you can mix it with the big boys if you if you want to um, uh, certain tracks, you know. But you know, even at, at Silverstone GP a couple of weeks ago, you know, won my class, you know, twice in the weekend in Libra. So you know, you, it will go against the big boys, but quietly it, behind the scenes, we've got a griff on build. So hopefully, we'll have that out next year. Oh, so, I like the sound of that. I yeah. like the sound of that. And yeah. and John, I mean, MGA, it's got to be one of the most beautiful cars ever for me. And uh, I, I, I don't know how you race those because it's like, the, you know, I'd wrap it in cotton wool. It's, uh, well, actually, that one is, is particularly lovely. It's been it's been a, uh, a nut and bolt rebuild from uh, uh, by MG Motorsport, which is which is fantastic. Um, and it's it's a competitive little package. And it's it's do you know what? It's got great character and it's great, great fun to drive. So uh, yeah, it's lovely. And also, when the when the weather is nice, of course, it's open top. And I, and I've got a works hard top, which I suspect I might be using this week. You know, <laughs> so it actually keeps me dry too. So it's a, it's a bit of a all weather car. Yeah, it's great. It's a great little thing. John, great little John, thing. John won't say this, but every car that John has is a hundred point car. Um, <laughs> so if you want to see a, a race car at its absolute best, have a look at John's race car because the attention to detail is amazing. Actually, yeah. I, I got into the cars before I got into the racing, and then and then now, of course, it's the, the two are interlinked. I, I wouldn't stop racing, but I I, I I enjoy the cars here very much. So, would you like to tell a bit about the club? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. For those who don't know us, um, we've been going for six years now. Yeah, this is our sixth year. Yeah. Six, our sixth mm -hmm. season, um, uh, and we started with uh, one grid, uh, which is equipped GTS. Uh, and GTS is uh, for uh, smaller engines FIA cars. So all the cars you see with us this weekend uh, are to, a, to FIA Appendix K. Um, we, do, uh, we do like to, uh, FIA papers, but they're not mandatory. So what you're going to see on, uh, on GTS, which is uh, one of our grids this weekend, you're going to see TVRs we talked about. Uh, you'll see MGBs. You'll see uh, Lotus Elites, Healy 100s um tr4s tr4s mgas yeah you know MGAs. anything on 2.7 liter and um, the tr4s always seem to find each other and race i've always found that when i've commented on you guys <laughs> they're normally very Ooh. fast and very and mostly at the front you know so Ooh, yeah um, well with gts it, it's interesting you know john and i raced in this um from its inception in you know in 2004 um so we've been around this brand and this ethos of racing um you know, it's our 16th, 17th year. So it's something that we were really passionate about. And that's what led us to, you know, six years ago, merging two series into one. Um, and then making really, really good, close, what we call premium club races. You know, so... Yeah. Because uh, we have a no-pro driver policy. So... Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we do. Um, and, and again, not just because that's my thing, but we, we, we like a good standard of car preparation... And the other thing I think which is which attracts people to us is we have very, very strict driving standards. Um, none of us are expecting a call up from Ferrari Formula One next week. We're all sponsoring and paying for our own cars. I think we, we do all right though at the minute at Ferrari Formula One. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're all, um, you know, we're all sponsoring and paying for our own cars. No, so, look, I mean, come on, no problem. Damage, no. You know, damage we don't like. And we, we have a red and yellow card system. So uh, um, if, if driving standards aren't bad, we, we warn people, but then we do exclude them from the racing. Oh, wow. Okay. That makes sense. And it's, and it's a ser it's series rather than championships, isn't it? it? Exactly that. That's the, that's the, it, it's an invitational series. What, yeah. that, what that means is that is we don't have to, with a championship, we, you have to accept if someone's cars, you know, conform to your regulations, you have to accept them regardless of how gung ho they can be as a driver. As an invitational series, we can make sure that, there's drivers out there that are a bit too aggressive for us um, that don't care, you know, and we care passionately about our drivers. So we look after the many, not the few, if that makes sense. So, yeah. no, so like who, who are the drivers to look out for this weekend? And also, is it is it a pit stop race this weekend? 
it is a pit stop race. Um, it's for each of the races, and we'll talk about our second grid in a second because we've got a second grid, which is Libra, which is a slightly different brand. Um, the the both the races on both days are forty minute pit stop races. The pit stop is between uh, window is between fifteen and thirty seconds. Each car has to remain stationary for forty five seconds. Uh, we've got half a dozen people in each race that are doing a driver change. They're doing two drivers and they've still got to stay still for 25 seconds. But you don't have to turn the car off. If you're right. a single driver, you can just come in, station you for 45 seconds and go again. There you go. Yeah. And it, uh, mixes, no, it mixes sense. things up because often uh, in, in this type of racing, you're racing the same person. Once you get going, you're racing the same person. But the pit stops, all, when you come back out from the pit stop, it just it, it, it really rumbles sure. up again, which is real fun. In, in G, GTS is going to be very close because I think there's probably half a dozen that could win. Um, so you've got Lee Atkins, uh, you've got Mark Ashworth, you've got um, myself, you've got Tom Smith, um, are all going to be at the very, very sharp end. Um, you, know, I, you know, Tom Smith, I've raced against Tom for 20 years now. He you drives know, really hard, doesn't he? Oh, <laughs> yeah, he, he's, very he's, he's amazing to race against. I think he's won over 120 races with that beat. Um, wow. which must be some kind of record somewhere, you know. Um, and after 20 years of racing against him very hard, I've, I've, I've beat him for the first time at, at, Brands, at Silverstone a couple of weeks ago. So um, uh, he's, he's going to be out for, for, uh, <laughs> for blood. Really? And that's for that in GTS. And then in, in Libra, yeah, yeah, in Libra, we've got, um, if you look at the grid that we have, we've got Mustangs, we've got Griffiths, we've got E-Types, we've got DB4 GTs, we've got uh, Chigero Bristols, you know, we've got Healy 3000s, we've got all the great and the good out this weekend. And it's going to be, in the wet, it's going to be <laughs> awesome. You know? uh, yeah, it will be. Yeah. Uh, worth highlighting the Chigero Bristol, uh, it's... I've got the, the registration. LOY 500. LOY 500, which is a period race car um, and a very valuable period race car. It's coming out with us. It's not been out for a few years, but that's a that's a real uh, good The last time was a good revival, I think. Yeah. That's and right. um, the the son, Simon Togero, son of... Oh. Is it Peter? Well, I don't know who the father's name is, but Simon, who's the son, is coming along to see the car. So that's oh, wow. really, really quite good. So that's a real star car this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've got, I think, three or four Mustangs that are going to be great to watch. Uh, the DB4 GT will be fantastic. Mm. Um, but the Healy 3000s around here, they're just, you know, if they've got the crowds here to watch this weekend, we've got, you know, Jack Rawls will be here in Healy 3000 this weekend with James Haxton. Um, you know, they will be ones to watch definitely in the wet. Yeah. Um, you know, and it will be just a joy to be on track watching those sliding through and, you know, because there's nothing, you know, I'm, you know, both John and I were both enthusiastic and enthusiasts about these, these era of cars. So when you go racing against them, you see them sliding around in front of you. It's, it's just wonderful. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. We've had some Healy races here before and they've been absolutely excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really good. I do look forward to that. I mean, uh, just uh, picking up on the comments, everybody, make sure you, you get ready to watch Tom Smith. He is just a drifter, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> he is absolutely he is, he is a great yeah. rainmeister, yeah. yes. He, he just crazy. breaks all the rules. I mean, you look at it and go, that, that, he's drifting that so quick. How has he got that under control? And he, especially yeah. if he's in the lead and it's towards the end of the race and he goes, the yeah. lead's big enough, he properly showboats then, doesn't he? Yeah. It's really fun. I raced against him a few years ago at Mallory Park in the wet. Uh, I think I was fourth. And he come past on the outside of Gerrard's, which is a very long right-hander, on the outside of me to lap me. <laughs> you know, and I was fourth. You know, it was just amazing. It's, it's great to race against Tom. And he's so humble with it as well. He's brilliant. Yeah, so. Agreed. Yeah, Jamie Boots, he's been racing TBRs a long time, hasn't yes. he? Yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've raced against Jamie Boots since 2003. Um, got very close to him in a wet uh, um, Alton Park a few weeks ago. Um, so if it's wet this weekend, I'm hoping to do battle with him again. Um, but yeah, he, he, he's blisteringly fast in the dry. You know, it's a stunning car as well. I, I sort of sense you're not a very competitive person, Rob. Is that correct? No, I think that's <laughs> what I've right, actually. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so something just tells me, you know. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> 
uh, uh, John, another quick question, and I should know this. Apologies, I don't know this, but Clive and I were chatting. Are you related to Gary Pearson? No, no. I'm, not, I'm not related to the other two John Pearsons. Um, there is uh, originally there was a John. He's still alive. The the um, John Pearson that, that runs HP Tires. The father. He has a son called John. Both are in the business. Um, and we know them very well. In fact, yeah. HP Tires and Dunlop are one of our sponsors. And mm -hmm. I get consistent calls. And then people say, no, but those tires, I'm going, oh, you've got the wrong John Pearson. <laughs> yeah. oh, no. I'd like to be that John Pearson. He drives D-type Jaguars. So, oh, uh, 250 Ferraris and yeah, D-types yeah. and everything. Yeah, that'd so be he great. Does, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm the, I'm, the, uh, I'm, I'm the other John Pearson, I would say. Uh, <laughs> fair <laughs> dues. <laughs> I had to check because obviously we, we come across all you guys quite that, a lot. On, that and John it's just the name. Harry's brother is the answer to your question. Yeah. Ah, got you. Okay, got you. Uh, another couple of people to watch out for. we got Shelby GT350 with some local interest there. Drivers yeah. that many of our fans will, will know uh, in Jeremy Cook and Russell Humphrey. Yeah. Uh, and Russell in particular picked that one up and went brilliant in that. I can't remember what race it was, but it was last year somewhere. Or was it the year before? I can't remember. But big beast of a thing, but piloted that blooming well. We've got two GT350s in the Libra race. So it'd be interesting on Sunday. Larry Tucker's bringing his one on Sunday. Um, so basically he's... Uh, and then obviously you've got Mark Ashworth and his notchback uh, Mustang as well. So yeah. I think those three are going to have a, a really, really good battle because Mark is a very fast peddler. You know? RGS Atalanta Sports two-seater. Discuss. Oh, yes. Love your car. Yeah. MG, very unique. MGA um, with a crossflow head um, in the engine bay. Um, but it's, it's one of the very few cars that still exist. So it's great to have it out. And he started wow. to get to grips with it now. It started to actually come along um, and be a bit more competitive because he's, he's had it sort of about two years now and been developing it. But it's a stunning car to see. No, I bet. I mean, it just sounds good as well, doesn't it? Just the yeah. name of it. Uh, we ha we've had Richard Falls already making comments. Good to see that he's along with David Alexander jumping out there in a few bits and pieces. David Russell Wilkes, one of my uh, brethren, is in the fact that he's been behind the mic commentating in the past as well. Yeah, he, yeah, he knows. Yeah, he's done a few. He's done a few bits, and he has a. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel where he streams uh, all of his in-car videos for the for his MGB. So, yeah, he's he's very entertaining. And has a fix a hub. And it, yes, yeah, and <laughs> have to fix anything. If you want to know how to do anything on MGB, you go and find his YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, yeah, the, the, the final one. one. He would go well, presumably. Who? Nick Bloomberg and the Lola Mark one. Is he going? Oh, Nick Finberg will be an absolute rocket ship yeah. in that. Yeah, he, he will be blisteringly fast. And and once again, what a stunning car, you know. Mm. A Lola, Lola Mark 1 is is possibly one of my favourite sports racers. Yeah, very yeah. very compact, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mm. That's properly using the Libra side of things, surely. I know it's not in the Libra, but that's free uh, getting a Lola in there, isn't it? Crikey, yeah. that's fabulous. Nick, Nick's been working that for a while, yeah. So. What about the Italia 2000? Is it? Is that based not based on Triumph two thousand or is it? No, it's it's based on a TR three in a TR mm three, -hmm. um, oh. but sadly it's withdrawn today. Uh, they've oh. had they've had an engine uh, a malfunction and then have had to they've gone home. They were testing today. It's a real shame because the, the the driver used to come to this circuit with. They used to live locally. They used to come to this circuit uh, with his father when he was a kid, and right. for him to drive to race here was a, was a lifelong ambition. Um, and he used to live, they used to live in the next street and his father used to know the, and I'm looking at here, I'll find the words, I can't see it, the, the owner, the ex-owner of the circuit. Strawbridge, is it? Strawbridge. Is Strawford. It? Strawford. Right. Yeah. The, his father yeah. knew, they knew each other and he oh. came here. So for him, this was the place he really wanted to race and he's oh, gone home. Shame. That's just heartbreaking. Final name then, because I know that you guys wanted to, to sort of duck off at half past, but um, someone I know very well, great car as well, Gilburn GT, John Hutchison, and that's John Hutchison Senior and Junior. And of course, yeah. I know John Hutchison Junior from when he was heavily involved with MG Car Club as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's great to see father son in a very interesting car as well. In interestingly, if you look across the, the entry list, you'll see that we do very well with the father-son combos. Dads and lads. Yeah, we have yeah. we have quite a few dads and lads racing. Um, and it's interesting to see who's quicker because racing with that consequence a lot of the time from the sons normally makes them a bit quicker. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah I can imagine. 
I mean, it looks a wonderful, wonderful entry, and I know Clive's going to be uh, uh, lapping this one up in the in the commentary box. Um, thank you guys so much for coming on the show, um, and thank you even more for for sort of bringing this amazing array of cars to 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 entertain everybody as well as yourselves uh, on on our Castle Coombe circuit. Well, from our from our point of view, it's been great that we've been invited to come, you know, this year, and hopefully we can make it a regular part of our calendar. You know, so that'd be great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, All right. best of luck and uh, hope to see you over the weekend then. Look forward to Brilliant. it. Brilliant. Come and find us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, gents. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Fabulous guest. Great way to sort of get an insight into it there, wasn't it, Clive? Yeah. Um, nice and, and of the lads, yeah, as well. It, it, exactly. So uh, uh, thank you to, to those guys. And they're going to go and uh, carry on. Rob's already joined his beer. I can see in the background. He, 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 <laughs> he's finished it. Or oh, is it whiskey, actually? I'm going to bring him back on again. What was that, Rob? <laughs> that was beer. It was a little oh. one and it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, right. I'll let you go properly this time. Cheers, yeah. dads. <laughs> Right. So um, we will be joined in about the next 10 minutes, I think, from uh, Stuart Kay from the uh, Classic Touring Car Racing Club, which, of course, includes our very own Gary Preble in there as well. And in fact, we've got a few others that we'll know, like Steve Putt. Chab is out there as well. So that'll be interesting to see everyone. Just quickly catch up on the comments. Gerald Howe says that he'll be marching at the sprint event. Tim Perry says just before pit entry for the end of Dick Mayo sprint. I don't think it is from what when uh, Andy Lawrence was speaking to me. It's actually a fair bit further back from there. But that was just where he showed me where it ended. And I should just be going in blind. Uh, oh, we've already got Celeste. Uh, of course, that's Adam Preble's better half. Fingers crossed for good weather. Shame no spectators again. That's not true. Sp spectators are back, Celeste, so they will be, just not the weather. You're right about that part, though, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, Tony Cooper, good evening, gents. Snetted and bound for the C1s. They are. I said that there was a few off doing that. Not missed a hot hatch race for years, but wanted to give the others a chance. <laughs> All right, very, Bless you. very kind of you. Bless you, mate. Bless you. Um, what's Andy saying? That was the British Sprint Championship. Uh, no, Andy, I wasn't commentating on that. They were on the the infield, the uh, Snetterton 100. They weren't have been commentated on. Um, I was covering the Lotus that went round the 200. Those guys were there for two days, and it was some amazing cars on that infield bit that kept distracting us from uh, from what we were supposed to be commentating on the 200. So, no, that was a different one again. Um, hang on, I'm trying to go down, but I keep clicking the wrong one. Uh, my dancing, uh, Marshall. Hi, everyone from Pippa Gore. Uh, great to see you there. Mike Cotton just said, yes, yeah, spectators will be there. They definitely will be. Um, Pippa's there for the weekend. Tony Dixon's from Swamp uh, Swamp Thing. I've driven a few TVRs, and there is something special about them. I'd love to have a crack. Yeah, so I've I never think. seen TVR either. No, it'd be good good to have a go in one. A bit yeah, of it's looks scary though. Yeah, well, yeah, some of them got a lot of power and what have you, but um, yeah, nice cars, nice engine sound too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Eileen Rutter watching as always from France. Hello there. On over the weekend, obviously we're not showing the uh, the feed of uh, the footage of the racing now that spectators are back, but we have managed now to secure it that the commentary always goes out with TSL. So go to tsl-racing.com, go to the Castlecombe event, navigate to the bottom, and you'll have a little place uh, button at the bottom. You press that, and you'll hear the guys uh, commentating. That's great because I know we've been nagged for that for a long time, and that's one of the good things that we've managed to to carry on after uh, all of this craziness josh barrett one of your co-commentators this weekend says very much looking forward to having a keep at castle coon yeah i hope you won't get too wet this weekend yeah he's uh, you're in the better place i guess aren't you really mate <laughs> baldrick brian evening gin master evening baldrick <laughs> um yeah chris pearson says i'm not related to either of them either <laughs> <laughs> there was a reason why we asked because there was a very real it was a john pearson that was related but it was a different one and it looked like you nodded you realized straight away it wasn't didn't I did, it? yes i knew once i saw him it wasn't him yeah um yeah thanks john and rob see you over the weekend dilly dilly says one of the uh, mighty orange army 
Um, Andy Lawrence says, you're both right. It's just before the pit exit if you're driving and a fairway before if you're walking. It's mm-hmm. enough time to slow down, which is a surprising distance. Ah, So it is. It's kind of on the kink. I always remember that what that's called, that sort of bit from Bobby's to, to camp, because... Well, I, really... guess, I guess they've got to go in the pit lane then, haven't they? So... Correct, exactly. Craig Tompkinson, uh, great to see the Nova is back out. I don't know if you've seen that, Clive. Is that in the hot hatches, the uh, the famous Vauxhall Nova is back yeah. out again. That's good news. Craig, uh, you always go well, so look forward to uh, seeing you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I look forward to Oh, Well, I'm missing it this weekend, but it sounds like he's going to be back by the sounds of the message that he's back for, for the majority of the year, which will be absolutely brilliant uh, if that is the case. Just checking because I've had messages in and I always ignore, I don't ignore them. I just end up, I'm a man, I can't multitask. <laughs> don't worry, Jamie. Um, Jamie saying uh, exactly what we, oh, we're pressing the wrong buttons again now. So sad to hear that Joe is moving on. Her work at Coombe has been tireless and it'll be a huge loss to the circuit in the club. Whoever replaces will have enormous shoes to fill. Absolutely. But what a great opportunity. Uh Good crowd last meeting, says Graham. It was Jordan Honeybone, the son of uh, Ray Norfolk Rocket uh, Honeybone. And, of course, he got to drive at Castle Coombe on the 12th of June in their uh, Renault Clio. So that would be good. Steve Barber, looking forward to racing my Anglia for the first time in 12 months with uh, Classic Touring Car Racing Club Pre-66. Good man. Welcome, uh, Stephen Barber. We look forward to saying that. Thank you, Gerald. I couldn't get my head. I was trying to remember Dean Straight. That's what it's called from Bobby. But it's not straight. It kind of kinks. <laughs> yeah, some, uh, uh, some good racers in the old days. And that used to drive Anglias. Does anybody remember, for example, Doc Murfield? Um, I think Chris Craft drove one as well, didn't he? Um, Brawl, Brawl Speed Anglia, I think. Well, certainly Brawl Speed Escort were but i think it was brought to be angler as well they used to race see that's where i'm at disadvantage to you mate i'm too young well <laughs> <laughs> it's me, chris you know i know there was no need for that was there no need <laughs> um right just quickly to uh look at the the uh the entry list we do have the uh i'll, I'll start with this one the uh castle coon race club sports race is it special event that we're trying to make an annual thing so that's why it's still there um the numbers as i say is that we're largely hit by the uh uh hi stuart i can see you in the background mate i'll uh, be with you in a minute you just got back from london um is that yes we would normally get things like the global lights over from um uh, from ireland but we still got a few challenges there as we know but we still got, um, I mean, a major representative from Josh Smith, of course, with uh, his RJ Motorsport uh, team, where we've got um, uh, Graham Charman in a Juno TR300, Andy Fido, or Fido, sorry, in a Radical SR3, Tony Barwell in an MCR. And then, there you go. There's an answer to your question. There is an MCR in there, isn't there? Yes, uh, Sports 2000, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, plus uh, Chris, Chris Child in a Radical SR4. Norman Lackford, great to see Norman back again in his Radical PR6. But outside of RJ Motorsport, we've also got Robert Gilman in a Radical SR3 and Andy Tidy in a Radical Pro Sport. I mean, those things going around Coombe are just mind-blowing, aren't they? Yeah, and as we saw with the um, Formula 3 race the other day, you don't need a big grid to make it pretty exciting. And uh... yeah, Absolutely. I'd just like to share my congratulations to St- Stefano because he was um, amazing to watch coming through Camp Corner. I must admit, mind blowing, wasn't it? Just... Guess, actually, last uh, the last the last TV thing you did with him was wasn't he was, brilliant? Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, really nice. I agree. And how cool to get that onboard footage as well. I love that. Uh, just quickly before we bring our next guest in, uh, Jordan says, great commentary at the weekend, Chris. Good to see you. Thank you, mate. It was great to see you and the family again, mate. Um, Tim Perry's giving me grief now. Oh, pulling the age card, Dorsey. Tut, tut. It's not going to be the last time, Clive, is it? Let's be honest. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Graham Conlon says, broad speed and super speed Anglias. Right, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just nodding my head. I don't know. Well, and Ted Williams, local driver, he used to drive an Anglia as well. 
Wow. Fair shout. Uh, and then finally, before we bring them on, uh, those radicals are mental quick, says Chris Pearson. You're not wrong. Right. We've got uh, from the classic touring car racing club. And I do feel sorry because he's just darted back from London. But I'm going to bring him on. I don't even think looking at it, I don't think you've had time to get a drink yet, have you, Stuart? You know, you, you're missing the point. We've got, we've got drinking and mate, but we're going to bring him on anyway. It's Stuart K. Good evening, mate. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Hi, How Stuart. Doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, you're quite right. <laughs> I've not had a chance. I've just changed my t shirt and run down to the end of the garden to do oh, this at <laughs> my, uh, my office. No, oh, that's uh, so decent of you. Can you clear something up for me? Because I tried to sure. look. What is your role with Classic Touring Car Racing Club? I'm the chairman. I knew I had a feeling it was, but I wanted to get the official line from you. It's only because I was trying to look in the middle of doing a million and one things. And I thought, you know what? I'll just ask him. Yes, but <laughs> ask away. It's not a problem. What a thing to be chairman of. I mean, that, that I, I'm gutted that I, I have commented on you guys uh, several times, but not as much mm. as I'd like, because the eclectic mix is mind-blowing that you guys bring to the table. Yeah, it's... Uh, it... It's a pleasure to be uh, to to have this position, uh, an honour, shall I say? Um, but yeah, you know, every meeting, it's uh, always something interesting turns up that you're not quite expecting. You know, especially uh, in the Thunder saloons, you get such a such a mix of cars. You know, you've only got to look at the entry list from the the V8 Falcons and Monaros of uh, Andy Wilson. Uh, <laughs> you know, down to um, Alan Hersey and his Reliance Scimitar. You know, everybody's there, you know, as you do, as you do, and everybody else in between. So, there, there's a grid that you'd never put together, isn't it? Really, let's be honest. No, there's not, no, there is. They don't normally go in the same sentence, that's for sure. But, yeah, I mean, I, I think way back, and I remember, um, I've been commentating now for uh, either 10 or 11 years, and Cascoon's where I started, and then the next place where I branched out to was was um, Alton Parker Circuit. I absolutely adore, and then from there through all the other MSV and, and various other things. And and I still to this day remember um, your sort of like pre o three, pre o five, those kind of classes with the Peugeots and what have you. And and it would always be good sized grids, good racing, um, and and you as a whole, it would always work. You'd you'd kind of have things like the 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 boss. Because that's the blue oval, isn't it? So yes. the the Fords that would occasionally kind of like dip down and then pick back up again. But as a whole, mm. it was just always this amazing grid. Yeah, it's weird. It goes. It seems to go in cycles as the years goes on. You know, this year it seems to be the Thunder Boss grid that's doing well. And obviously, after pre sixty six, you know, they're normally around fifteen twenty cars. We've had forty car grids at the first two events. Wow. Um, and you know, it's I, I don't know where everybody's coming from. I don't know whether it was because Boris locked us all up all winter, and everybody <laughs> was so desperate to get out and uh, and have a race. Everybody just did everything. Um, and even this, you know, this event at, at Coombe, you know, we're seeing last time. I think we brought about seventy or something cars there. There's 125 entered, um, <clears throat> and um, and counting. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, it, we must be doing something right. Oh, yeah, massively. I mean, Clive, I'm I'm very envious because obviously I'm I'm pulled away and you're leading this one. And I've got to be honest and say, you look at this grid as well. Again, you must be looking forward to this, Clive. Absolutely fabulous. Yeah, I mean, as you say, in the Thunder, you've got those lovely BMW M3s uh, mm. going, of fabulous cars, um, and going back at you know Mustangs and Hillman Imps, which are always good to watch racing for Mustangs. Um, Capris, um, owned a Capri once, um, Escort RS2000s, uh, Alfa Romeos, Honda Civics. Yeah, really looking forward to it. It is, uh, it is everything. But the nice thing about the old saloon cars is you can really see what the drivers are doing, can't you? And yeah. you can see what the cars are doing, um, yeah. sliding and the leaning sometimes and that sort of stuff. Well, I think by the weather forecast for this weekend, they'll definitely be sliding and leaning, or or they'll need a pair of oars to get up the straight, one or the other. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you can see the comments that are coming in is that people are loving this. This uh, Spoon and Orange uh, uh, CTCRC were the best race at Silverstone meeting earlier this year. Looking forward to seeing them in action at home this weekend. Okay. So that's uh, uh, Orange Army that obviously travels, but it's back at its home circuit. Great grids, great action. Bring on the thunder uh tog pearson one of the photographers 125 cars that's going to be a lot of photos <laughs> yeah. uh and uh thomas oh and i think i should have bought my flamingo mug up but just heard 40 plus grids assembly is going to be busy 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it really, really is. I mean, mm. I, I guess that's the double-edged sword for you, though, Stuart, is that this is exactly what you want, what you need. But my gosh, that's a, a lot of work. Uh, yes. And as you have found out today, you know, I've got a full time job as as uh, as everybody else in the club. We're all volunteers. We do it because we love the old cars and love keeping it going, giving some, you know, giving everywhere people somewhere to race. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is a lot of work. Um, and, that, is, and you're racing, and you mentioned about a Capri there, Clive. Is that I've, you may have noticed a little twinkle in Stuart's eyes? Is that that's what you get to race as well, Stuart? I will, yes. Yeah, so I'll I'll get my Capri back. Um, we we had an incident at Silverstone at the beginning of the year, so I missed the Donington meeting with the car. I was there as a, in an official capacity, but um, yeah, so it should be fingers crossed the first uh, first race of the year. So I'm going to do the pre-93 race as well as the pre-83 sort of double up so we're traveling all the way down to uh to castle kermie miles and make the most of it absolutely yeah. too right mm. does your I mean, have any history stuart oh. no it's a, it's a it's a copy of the jerry marshall triplex car um okay. uh, we've raced it at goodwood a number of times but it's, it is a copy there's no history to it we built it about eight or nine years ago now right um, yeah so i just uh, I built it as close as i could um but no sadly not sadly it's not an original no but Although we do have we do have if i just pull this out quickly we have uh mark bevington with the toyota sleeker gt uh, and that was martin brundle's this original uh -huh. car oh, from, right. uh, from the uh, 82 81 82 touring car championship yeah i saw so that right in the day yeah yeah so there's some some real cars out there or some original cars should i say yeah I mean, just I, I I cannot stop but getting excited as I look. I genuinely am. I'm, I'm really gutted that I'm I'm not there because you know we've got like just looking at the boss, Malcolm Wise in his Ford Sierra Cosworth. I'm used to seeing Malcolm Wise in an Escort Cosworth, but he's in a Sierra Cosworth now. Yeah, he's got both. He's so he, when he races up at Brands and other places, he's got his Escort that he races. White he and yellow one, isn't it? That's it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he's got a Sapphire Cosworth that he races with us because we two-wheel drive only we don't have four-wheel drive ah, okay and then up against them i feel sorry for this is a ford anglia yeah you know but that is quite a special ford anglia it's owned by martin reynolds it's uh i think it's a 2.5 uh millington engine in it it's uh ah, okay <laughs> huge art with huge bubble arches on it it's a very special car that he's built himself a ford it's anglia on steroids would that be fair to say then and then some yeah and then some. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, it really is a catch-all. Like Blue Oval Saloons really is a catch-all for everything with a full badge on it. A hundred percent, yeah. And I mean, you've got a, a couple of Mark One Escorts, Capri, Ford Fiesta's in there as well, Ford Fiesta yeah. R1600, Ford Escort Mark II, Zach Speed in there. Just amazing. Classic Thunder probably catch the majority of people's attention, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it does. that mind-blowing stuff, isn't it? It does, as they rumble past it uh as that rolling start goes past you and you're watching it from the pit lane it's uh it's quite something you know i was literally just chatting with andy wilson uh, um uh about the uh the grid we had at donnington i mean it was amazing it's 40 cars and they're just uh, it's just yeah it was breathtaking how fast <laughs> they are absolutely <laughs> breathtaking brilliant to watch the crowd are going to love these, honestly. Ford Falcon, Andy Robinson, and I've covered him in numerous times in that, as as with Andy Wilson in his Monaro as well. Yeah. Um, Steve Putt, our very own Steve Putt, in his uh, flame belching Mazda RX-7. He's known yes. very well to our crowd, obviously. Yes. Gary Whitaker, I think, was born in a BMW, to be honest with you. That's a very <laughs> powerful, well-driven Andy Cripps as, uh, as well. Uh, so a number of BMW M3 uh, E46s, uh, an RX-8, um, a GT4 uh, M3 that is Ch uh, Charles Hyde Andrews Bird is driving that, and I yes. commented on his dad, uh, Kevin Bird, piloted that last weekend at Snetterton right. and mm -hmm. dominated that race there in the new Snetterton Saloons race that they they did there, and he absolutely oh, yeah. dominated that. It was brilliant. He was gutted. He missed pole by point zero seven three or something, so he made up for it in the race. I, th I I felt sorry for the rest of the field. So that's a powerful car. Vauxhall Vectra, Vectra 888 ST, is that like a, a touring That's car? That's Jason Plato's touring car. Oh, that wow. is the car. That is the car. That is a super tourer. Wow. So Jason Hughes will be driving that, and he's kept it in livery, yeah? 
and he's in livery yeah and he brings his spare car with him every time which is his uh mg uh whatever they are i'm not sure what it was the, the uh oh, right. super Taurus, the yeah the touring cars yeah he brings that with him every time there's a spare just in case as something you, happens to the as venture. you do as you do yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a different world isn't it a different yeah, it world. Yeah. so may struggle to keep up <laughs> Yes, but you know what? The guy that runs that, Ryan Steele, that that car, he, as you may, some people on watch, you may have seen at Silverstone. I was, I was a bit worried because he took, turned up this little Citroen sit, Saxon. on. I thought he's not going to like this one bit. And uh, when he was about running about fifth on the grid, I realised that it's quite a quick <laughs> Citroen Saxon, and he Is can it? pedal a car. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, that'll be interesting. A good bit of momentum there. Mm. Um, Honda Zip. Excuse me, Honda Civic Type R, Mitsubishi Starion. I feel like yes. I should know what that is. Yeah. It's Neil Philpott's car. He's returning to the club. Uh, he's a few years out now, um, but he's just redone the car and uh, he's bringing it back out again. It's, uh, it's a lovely old car, that is. Yeah. For another car that spits flames everywhere. It's, oh, really? Yeah, he's a flame. <laughs> yeah it does spit that. flames that silly everywhere. We do love that. Cool. Then the Reliant Simica, uh, Simiter, sorry, uh, GTE, mm. Ford Escort, Mark One of Colin Voice. Uh, one of our local drivers, Andy Abrams, good to see he's going to be out there in his yes. uh, M3 BMW. Which is um, his first time back with the club, I believe. He did text me, I think it was since 1999. I know he's watching this, so I will say hello. <laughs> he should be. Andy normally watches, of course, Melksham. He's one of our local drivers. Mm. And you missed the Dolomite Sprint as well, um, Chris, which... Uh, Oh, did I? It used to be very competitive in their day, yeah. Um, people like Andy Rouse used to drive them, didn't he? Tony Drum. Yes. Um, yeah. And I've got the uh, um, uh, Starin is what, and I should say Clarkson did autographs in. So there you go. That's what apparently is that that uh, Mitsubishi Starion is what uh, Jeremy Clarkson did the uh, autographs in. And a Peugeot 206 as well in that one. Yes. Uh, Pre-03, a couple of things that jump out of me. A very good friend of mine uh, and just a great character in any is AJ Owen in his Honda Civic Type R. Mm. And Gary Preble, who we know incredibly well, the most winningest driver at Castle Coombe by a long way. Yeah. And those two had the most phenomenal fighting at Silverstone and yet barely a speck of paint traded. That was a close race, wasn't it? I have to say, it was uh, it was it was a pleasure to watch. I, 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 it's not often I get the time to to sit and watch the races because I'm only running around after my own car or after everybody. And uh, no, it was that was brilliant to watch. And did you know what? They had a repeat performance at Donington as well. And they, there wasn't, a, 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 as you say, an ounce of paint strip we took touch between the two of them. So amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. I just wish to see what happens this weekend. <laughs> Well, quite. I just wish that I'd see AJ back in Boss as well, though, in Bluey, the uh, blue Ford Sierra yes. Cosworth that he's got. They've still got it, haven't they, as well? They do still have it, yeah, and I understand that he's being prepared for, for, for one of them, whether it'll be uh, uh, Owen Senior or Junior, I'm not sure. but Yeah, we haven't seen Owen Senior out racing for a little while, have we? No, he was going to do uh, Thunder in his Holden that he was he was running but for some reason that he, he parted ways with that car and I think it's um yeah I think they're just getting the uh the Sierra ready but I'm not I'm not too sure to be honest with you. I love that car that's the first time I ever met AJ and his family was up at Alton Park and they had a huge problem and then his sister came charging up in a car on like stupid o'clock in the morning with the part from home that they needed to get it fitted so that they could go out and race yeah it's true true, true club racing Absolutely, hundred percent, and they're a great guy. And of course, the AJ's own uh, own family has now grown, whereas married in a, a gorgeous little inn and all that sort of stuff. So great to see. So look out for that one, AJ and Gary Preble, Don Hughes, probably the tallest racing driver in the country. Peugeot three hundred six XSI. Yeah, another lovely guy. Yes, yeah, a really nice guy. And is that the Pro Three grid seems to be growing a little bit this year? I think it went through a couple of years of struggle um but now you can see and there's a lot more inquiries around that that we're getting people interested you know can i race this can i race that so uh hopefully it's going from strength to strength that's what we want to hear i mean there yeah. is uh ford escort rs2000 honda civic type r's bmw 46 compact e36 touring civic type r civic civic type r i mean it's a cracking mix a good number mm. out in that one as well um 
do jump in by the way if there's suddenly something that I'm not picking up on that's worth no, picking no. up on. Uh, no, pre sixty six. I mean, this is just incredible and such a, a, a <laughs> David and Goliath in that one, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There is. I mean, a lot of the guys in the minis are going to be doing a rain dance, aren't they? Friday. I don't think they need to do a rain dance this weekend. To be doesn't honest, sound but it, no, <laughs> doesn't sound it. I must admit, he's not off to pack a sou'wester with my crash helmet, but you know. <laughs> 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 I, did, I did buy some waterproofs today. And oh, this is not going to be great. But um, they'll yeah, have a I mean, they need to have a chance, won't they? If it's very wet, actually. Um, yeah, well, they will. You, they will. You know, then there's some there's some fast cars out there. Paul Inch has come back. Um, yeah. He's very fast, as you know. Plymouth driver. Um, you know, Alan Greenell and, and Piers Grange. You know, the, the Mustangs and the Falcon. I think they're going to struggle if it rains. If they're not, then I think you might see them stretch their legs a little bit and, and get away. Um, but I, I, I'm not a betting man at the best of times, but I wouldn't be money putting money on that race because it could be anybody, absolutely anybody. You know, it's it would like depend on how that. much standing water at that point, wouldn't it, really? Yeah, having been caught, I was we like when we raced there in 2015, we were caught in a massive thunderstorm in the pre-80 I was out in the pre-83 race in the Capri and I remember just how bad it was it was just <laughs> you know you just every time you go around you're waiting for the flags <laughs> just to yeah. get out of this car um so yeah it was uh it'd be interesting but it's both days isn't it you know we've got to pers- persevere and see see how we go yeah uh, exactly Ford Lotus Cortinas they're always good fun to watch so that's a cracking mix in that one so yeah minis yeah. versus mustangs and falcons as you do we we love that coom though don't we clive we get plenty of that david and goliath stuff and the crowd absolutely adore when you get the the little ones taking on the big ones there's always yeah. um, a big crowd piece so yeah 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 no they'd be cracking on to the pre-83s chevy camaro jaguar xj12 yourself obviously in the capri as well as uh, as malcolm best um, yeah uh, Melk's been out for a while. We haven't seen him this year, so this is his first uh, first uh, trip back to the club. <clears throat> okay, oh, that's uh, but a, cool. But again, you've got the VW Golf of uh, of Simon Jeffs. Um, if it's raining, he's going to be gone. He's going to be gone anyway. He seems to have found his mojo the last couple of races. But towards the end of the season last year and the beginning of this season, he's really got that car how he wants it, um, and I think he'll be gone. I think you might get Steve Primitz very good in the wet. Um, the rest That's of us. Mark one escort. So, Mark yeah. one escort. He's very, yeah. very good in the wet. Um, I don't Mike, know about the rest. I'm not sure about the rest of us. Yeah. Mike, Mike Lutz, very quick. He's an ex uh, Clubman's driver who I know from my Clubman's yes. days. Yes. He's a very quick driver. Yeah. He's very quick. He said some. Uh, yeah. He, but the, the thing is, he's, there's probably five or six dry, fast drivers at the front of the 83 grid. Yeah. It could be any of them, but as I say, if it's raining, I, I would you'd go, you'd put money on the golf, and that's yeah. a Mark One GTI. I mean, that's a classic, isn't it? Goodness, beautiful me. car. Really well, beautiful interestingly, car. Chris Pearson said my forecast has been optimistic and showing light showers all weekend, so that oh, that would change it again. I do hope so. <laughs> yeah, I do hope so. So do I, because I got to commentate on these NASCAR boys. You know, you're a NASCAR, and they don't normally do things in the wet. They will do, but they won't like it. <laughs> yeah, well, are you at Speed Fest? Are you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that'd be interesting. That'd be good though. It'll be, it'll be good, but it'll be a shame, especially as it was it sort of suggesting thunderstorms on Saturday, and it's like, yeah, those NASCARs yes. are not built for that. <laughs> yes, I see that. I live nearby, so yeah, I, I saw the thunderstorms here. Yeah, yeah, so uh, no, but uh, yeah. No, it should be. Uh, it should be all right. So, do, are there any um, sort of restrictions? Who, what cars you allow, and um, things like that, or as yeah? Long as so obviously, we, we, we keep the cars in the um, in the age groups. Uh, you know, as accordingly, the pre sixty six, pre eighty three, etc. Um, that's even more optimistic. But yeah. I'll have that. I'll bring me shorts. <laughs> no, now you've changed it bad again with that comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the cars are, um, you know, we've got quite strict regulations to, to try and keep the racing fair uh, and tidy. We, we're not one of these clubs that sort of has an all comers or has it all wide open. It just becomes he with the most money otherwise at that point you know you've got to try and keep a lid on it and you know we run to fairly closely to the uh the touring car regulations that that happened you know back in the day right yeah, yeah. 
Um, we, as I said, we're Thunder. We don't have four wheel drive. We used to have four wheel drive, um, and we phased it out, and the grids expanded. Uh, I think so. You know, because again, if you had a four wheel drive, you're off into the distance. Um, it's just how it is. They're very, you know, they're fast cars and they've got all the grip. Sure. Um, so we don't. That's why we don't allow them. It's just just to to keep the racing fairer and and you know the grids at a decent size. Yeah. Interesting one is that you know you quite often get um, certain races that, that that we cover that might be sort of really very much for the drivers and might not be a particular spectacle for the spectators yeah. and then the opposite way potentially as well whereas i see that this one sits smack in the middle it really is an absolute crowd pleaser across mm. the board but the enthusiast level is that they're like going no this is this is for us but they kind of probably enjoy that they know they're putting a show on as well yeah no uh, thank you i i it is. As somebody said to me before they said the classic touring car meetings are not just a race meeting, they're a car show as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we do have people who are more enthusiastic than racers and they'll quite happily potter around at the back, but they've had a lovely time and they'd have a barbecue with their friends and exactly. talk about old cars and all the rest of it. And it's, you know, it's, it's a, a friendly sort of family community that we've, we've got together. Yeah, which is great, isn't it? Absolutely great. Yeah, and really, yeah, yeah, no, it is. It is. Racing is all about as well. Um, yeah, and I think sometimes, you know, sometimes you go to some events and they're, they're quite sterile, and you, you know, you turn up, you do your race, you put, you, you, you pay, pay your money, and off, you, and you go home, and that's it. And it's, we're not really about that. We do try wherever possible to to make sure that they're weekend events, so people can travel. Um, but you know, we, you know, I take my children. A lot of us take our wives and children, and we have barbecues, and the kids will get together and stuff. You know, it's it's not just the racing; it's a there's a, it's a whole, whole whole other side of it that people don't see. And yeah. and there's a clear sort of like you are able to you, you've kind of structured it in a way, both in terms of the makeup of the do do we call them classes? I don't. I guess they are, aren't they? Like the yeah, I guess the, so, yeah. yeah is that you can actually fit into more than one and they're divided as to when they race so they could. Like, for example, I haven't looked at the names, but I'm assuming they are. Like, there's a whole load of Jags that are in the pre-93 that are also in, obviously, the Jack as well. Yeah, and, you know, we just make, like myself, I'm doing the pre-83 race and I'm doing pre-93 as well. Um, you know, the 66 cars are eligible for 83, 83 for 93 and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, it helps, you know, for those that want to just keep driving round and round all day, they can. Um, and, you know, it helps the grids. Some, you know, it just helps keep all the grids full. We do a second race is £99. So, oh, wow. Okay. So we just, because they've already, people have already paid their money, you know, we just just as a sort of token amount to, to, to get people out there. You know, we're not after people's money or making profits because we don't, you know, we're a non-profit organisation. Um it's just about making the grids and making a spectacle as it should be. I love that. That sounds so cool. Well, that's where the pre-93, I mean, sorry, the pre-83s we're finishing off. You've got things like an Alpha GT V6. We talked about the Mark 1 Golf, an Escort Mark 1 RS200, Triumph Dolomite Sprint, uh, the E21 320 BMW, uh, another Triumph Dolomite Sprint, Toyota Celica GT, an Alpha Sud. I love the Alpha Suds. Pre-93s, we've got XJSs, uh, quite a good number of XJSs, which yeah. is my dad's favourite car, uh, always has been, which is why I've sort of like inherited that sort of love of that myself as well. XJ12s, BMWs, yourself out in the Capri, Vauxhall Astra GTE. Now, there's a, there's a classic. A Rover Tomcat as well. We used to see quite a few of those out at Castle mm. Coombe. 325i E30s. That's good that we were able to get some of those out with like production BMW championships sort of like yeah. dwindling down. But they're, yes. they're great cars to drive. Toyota Corolla, Alpha Sud. And then, of course, we've got the full uh, Jaguar Enthusiast Club as well that uh, are yes. out with, with a whole array of, of Jaguars there as well. Yeah, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the Jags have joined us this year um, as part of the, uh, the circus, if you like. Yeah. Um, and um you know it's they, they, they brought uh we we when we first spoke to uh chris robinson uh who runs the from the jc about coming across we looked at the um the cars you know we they fit well with the club it's part you know they're, they're around the same era 
um as our cars and we just felt it would they fit perfectly in so they 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 left the cscc i think they were they wanted to run in their own grid which is entirely up to you know i understand that fully um so we've got a deal together with bark and us and uh yeah they run with us and uh, long may that continue they're a great bunch of guys and uh you know they're really starting to get i think it's they've got off to a little bit of a slow start but they're really starting to get in their stride yeah um, and I'm trying to sort of like, and, and I'm not necessarily an expert on this, but I kind of almost remember some of the big Jags that would race when I was growing up, sat up at Quarry Corner, fall in love with racing and the big Jags going up over Avon Rise and lumbering around. And yet they'd, they'd still be so quick. And you look at them and go, how, how are they doing it? <laughs> yeah, it must be quite, I said that to one of the other guys in the Jags, I said, it must be I was petrified. He's trying to go sideways in one of them things, but they seem quite happy. You know, I know. They, they look enjoy, like they're they enjoy being tanks, scared to death. They? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're big old cars. Uh, but no, as I say, great bunch of guys, some lovely cars out there. And uh, yeah, you know, it'd be, be, a, be a good old weekend. I'm not sure what it's going to be like in the wet, but you know, might be a, <laughs> might... <laughs> there we are. We'll enjoy that. Well, we'll see where that is. I mean, it just looks like a phenomenal uh, mix of cars. And yeah, Clive, going back to you for a minute, you, you got to be looking at sort of like just licking your lips thinking, I get to commentate on this lot. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of these cars in period when I was a um, very, very young, of course. Um, I'm not going to play the age card again yet, Clive. I've only just moved <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, it does bring back memories and you know I, I think seeing the old cars and the way they're driven um sort of brings back a lot of memories for people my age and a bit younger and it really brings it home what in a way the really good days of motor racing um you know so i think that's great yeah. as i said earlier i think it's really nice to sort of have the amateur clubs where people are doing it for fun as you say it's a family occasion as well um but also some very very quick drivers amongst them and um uh, you know that's what it's all about quick cars and quick drivers amongst them absolutely uh, yeah remind me because obviously i haven't looked into it as much as i would normally is this a championship or are they series championship the championship um and we as we are the uh the first club to bring back prize money so we brought prize money back to club racing I saw that. I saw that because you. Uh, we got to have a word with you about that because you dragged Gary Preble away because there was money to be made. So, uh, oh, you know, there's no need for that. <laughs> well, he still races with you guys, and I think he's bringing two cars at the weekend, isn't he? He's from, he's from he Instagram, is. tells but me. Because, so, but that's because you're here, so that's fine. But when yeah. <laughs> when you're at Silverstone, he was there instead of with us. Uh, I'm only yeah. joking. I mean, he's it is a massive record, isn't he, Chris? I think he did. Was it four or five races he won in one weekend a little while back? really yeah he won the patch and the saloon didn't he and um yeah it is it is he is amazing uh what he manages to do but um i mean it's so good to see you know the the prize money like you say is and i was going to come on to that and i wasn't sure with how much i'd be able to say about it but it is so good to see that back when you've got i mean we we had um fluxy recently sort of making a comment on people's social posts is that he remembers when he was getting prize money and yeah. that was how he, you know, those guys made their living back in the day was yeah. that they were getting prize money. And that's been gone for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. And, you know, well, I wanted to turn the tide on on it. You know, for me, you know, I've raced myself for many years and I've been, you know, I grew up, my dad raced and rallied and all the rest of it. So I've been in and around motorsport for many years. Um, it just seemed to be a one way street. Um, but I knew I had to took a bit of a gamble um and to introduce prize money um was my sort of pledge as chairman was to give the drivers back any profits that were made from grids so if we buy a grid we make money on it we'll put it in the pot and we'll give you the money back um we've tried discounts and all that kind of stuff and you never really ends up you end up in a bit of a pickle with discounts and uh you know it's sort of here system stuff. so if we put two thousand pound prize money on each championship we've got um and at the end of the year you know we'll do the big check and all the rest of it and uh, uh if we can have a dinner and dance this hope we can uh yeah. you know we'll do it at the awards evening uh, and the drivers will get get it back and i will continue to do so as long as i'm chairman this is not just a flash in the pan this will continue um and, and you know we have other other ideas and you know we announced it 
um, just at the AGM last year. So it was announced it in November. And the club has almost doubled in size over the winter. Really? Um, yeah. The actual memberships, actual actual memberships um, has doubled. That's brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant. And, and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there's as much you know, not just about the physical, oh, I can win cash, but there's as much about kind of two things jump to mind is that, you know, you bought mentioned about a one way street and don't get mm. me wrong. It isn't as easy as that. And I think even, you know, yeah. it's it's not as black and white as that for a lot of, of environments, but it's a fair comment as well. But also doesn't it kind of give us almost a nostalgia element that, yeah, that's mm. the way it used to be. Yeah. And, and that, that was the thing, you know, I talked just, uh, in detail with Andy Wilson about this, you know, him and I had lots of conversations around it um, over the winter. Oh, sorry, on the build up to it, it was something I wanted to do a couple of years ago because COVID kicked in. I couldn't, um, but I couldn't understand why. There's no reason why we should ever have uh, sort of accumulate money. What am I going to do? I don't. I don't get paid. Nobody gets paid. Mm-hmm. It's only ever just going to sit in a bank account. So why not just give it back to the drivers? It's their money. It's not mine. You know, I pay the same £99 membership as everybody else um, and give it, you know, it's just the, the prize pot gets bigger. The more people are in the club, the prize pot goes up. It's as simple as that. And is no. the money picked on champ- final championship positions or individual races? Final, we did a final championship because it would just get too complicated and too too expensive to be honest with you if you started doing it on because you know you look at the pre-66 it goes down to class f you know if you're second in class or whatever it would just be like a 25 quid here there and everywhere now don't get me wrong we've even looked at ways of doing uh something maybe in the future for class wins um as i said to someone before the fact that it's it, the fact you're getting something back someone's giving you something back so look you've won this you know it's like when you go to the local fair and you get a tin of beans so you win it right you you know he's great and someone's yeah. giving you that money back um so yeah we will try and do anything we can just to ensure um that the drivers get the best deal yeah <laughs> I like it. I mean, I, I do want to caveat that going is, is that that is a particularly unique setup there that, that is there. And, and, you know, I'm not casting any expressions. I know Stuart wouldn't either as is that, uh, you know, ourselves included, but I, I've got to applaud you what you've done there. And I just, my, my fan hat on there goes, how cool is that? That's reminding me of the, of the, of the good old days. So, you know, well done. And, and Graham Conlon's put up a comment saying, well done, Stuart and, and things like that. So fair shout. And it shows. I mean, the eclectic mix of cars, as well as this, the the number of them, is is going to be amazing. And and you guys will hopefully have a wonderful time at, at Castle Coombe. And and I know the spectators are. And Clive's going to go supersonic uh, with the. Oh no, that's me in it. Sorry, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 You're more controlled than me, aren't you? <laughs> it's it's going to be a great great uh, situation. What are you doing? You travelling down tomorrow or Saturday morning? Uh, no, tomorrow night. Once a f- finish work <laughs> get cool. the truck get everything oh Connie will bring the car down for me but yeah i'll um i'll jump and sit on the uh, sit on the m25 and uh, enjoy the traffic between uh, the m3 and the m4 and then uh trundle I'll, down I'll, the m4 about I'll wave to as i'm going the opposite direction yeah then. yeah we'll have a little little <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, yeah listen. no we'll be down there Thank you so much for joining us, Stuart. And as I say, I know that you've just sort of darted back um, from London and, and you've jumped, been good enough to jump on. I hope it was worth it just to sort of give everybody that, that sort of personal insight into this. No, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's been brilliant. Um, before I go, I just want to, can I just thank uh, just the, the committee and the guys that are you know, behind the scenes pushing uh, pushing everything. It's not just me. It's just uh, I'll put my hand up and seem to, <laughs> seem to do the <laughs> volunteer for these sort of things. But there's a lot of very dedicated people behind me that make this a very special place. And, of course, all of our sponsors. Fabulous. Oh, excellent. Thank, thank you. you. We'll Stuart, you thank you very much. Now you can go and breathe and you can go and find a drink and most, possibly even food. You know, spoil yourself. Have some starving, food. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks thank a you, lot, guys. Well, Cheers, nice guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Uh, Clive, I got to say, after speaking to both of those uh, groups of guests, I'm I'm so envious. Now you're going to have a ball, aren't you? And, and that's you know the real enthusiasts is what I like. You know they are true, genuine enthusiasts, aren't they? Genuine people, genuine yeah. um, love motorsport, love cars, love racing. Um, exactly right. Love the social aspects of it. Um, in fact, I, I used to, um, my clubman's car that 
um, one of the club and scars I race is behind that picture. I, I, the BARC used to give prize money um, mm. when I was racing, so I mean, it wasn't a lot, so, but it probably just about covered the sort of entry fee at the, at the day if you won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it all it's, helped. I mean, it's I not easy. Know, but, you know, know it, for different clubs, it's not necessarily possible or, or the right way to go. But It really isn't. And, you know, it's, it's a very challenging thing and it's a very unique situation they've got there. And, of course, they'll have had to have had the numbers. Ironically, I know they're saying the numbers have increased, but they'll have had to have had the numbers there in the first place to then be able to do that and That's the way that they're set up. And, it, and fair shout. Um, just picking up on a couple of bits and pieces, uh, Chris Pearson said, I remember seeing the Mark 1 Jags drifting around Quarry. Absolutely. That's my big, big memory. James Peters Ennis says, Ray Ferguson, I think, holds the record for six races in a day. That's doing it, but I think that you're referring to winning yes. four races uh, yeah. That is the big yeah. difference. And Ray, bless him, we love him dearly, but it wasn't winning six races. Um uh everybody thanking Stuart for coming on. Um Tim Perry says uh Hi. thank you, Stuart. See you at the weekend, Dilly Dilly, Chris Pearson. Good to uh, kind of meet you, Stuart. Uh Graham Collins says, Stuart, what a guy uh with the right ideas for club racing. Absolutely, and, and such a, an incredible mix. Great to see Steve Putt will be back as well in the uh, flame belching beast as well. Um and of course, I mean look, I can't, I'm the biggest one that I ca- cannot wait for to hear how it goes down is uh, is AJ and uh, and Gary Preble is just going to be incredible. So that's your classic touring car racing club. We've uh, done the key, we've yeah. done the sports races. So let's jump to the beginning. Um, the GTs. Yep, the GTs. In fact, is the uh, second race on Saturday. Um, but actually, it's the first race. Second first race. Today. Pre yeah. practice, uh, second practice session. I'll have been commentating for half a day by the time you do that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> just quickly, just quickly put this up because it's one of the drivers. Andy Wilson says, I'm leaving Doncaster tomorrow morning, 7 30 a.m., driving to Norwich to pick up the Monaro from Seaman Motorsport, then from there to Castle Coombe, 12 hours touring. Can't wait. That's <laughs> commitment for you, isn't it, Andy? Good man. <laughs> you as awesome does for you. It does. Um, I mean, this GT Championship fight is intriguing. Tony Bennett leading away on 25 points with Ollie Bull on 24. Very, very close, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and they're both, they're both out this weekend. Yeah. And, of course, um, Tony Bennett's won his class every time so far. Um, yeah. And um, so it was a very close. Uh, may come down to reliability or something happening, of course, because they're both likely... I would suggest to win their classes this weekend, um, all being well. That's probably good. Yeah. Yes, I don't know. I don't know about this. Um, we've got an, uh, an, a class B car, number fifteen, Gary Bristow, Interceptor Racing, who we know well, and they're out in a Vauxhall Tigra, presumably another yeah. silhouette car. And I don't know anything about that one. No, I'm not sure either, actually. And um, but that that could be. And, a... Sorry, I've just also noticed we've got two from Interceptor Racing because it includes Russell Humphrey himself, who of course is the boss of Interceptor Racing, out in another Vauxhall Tigra. So oh, I'm yeah. they've got a pair of uh, of Tigra silhouettes out now. That could offer a cat amongst the pigeons. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you consider that Ollie Balls is obviously a Tigra silhouette. It's got a slightly more powerful engine um, and, and souped up. Incidentally, thank you to, to Jeremy Irwin. Dropped me an update saying, after the last round, uh, found to have large crack in the rear disc. They reckon it happened during cool down after the race, though. Also had a moment on grid when the car stalled at the start of green flag lap. Took about 10 seconds to fire it up but he managed to get away before the last car went past him. So that was okay. Examination of log data showed fuel pressure dropped to zero, wow. but there was no explanation found for why it did that. So they put a new f- um, uh, filter pump, new pressure pump, new filters, new pressure regulator, and new mechanical high pressure pump in there to make sure. Testing today, and I haven't had an update at the moment, but testing on Thursday to bed in all the new equipment and try out uh, yet another new design for cooling the front brakes, which has been their long on standing uh, issue. Um, and to cycle a new set of tyres, we'll update you on Thursday if we get a chance. Just quickly picking up on this, uh, Tim Perry says, Isn't that the green one we've seen previously? I didn't think it was because that was someone else. 
Which one uh, are we talking about? The, um, the Tigre silhouette. The green one was somebody else, I think. Yeah, I'm not quite sure, to be honest. But Russell Humphrey would be interesting as well, as you say. Well, says, Jamie Peters only says, it's Gavin Bristow, good mates with Russ Humphreys. It's a new build, now lives, I'm sure that means, in the USA. Used to race minis around 10 years ago. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure if I don't think it, well, judging from that, it's not, it's a new build, so that'll be really interesting to see those. But Ollie Balls is a Tigra, the flirtations one, still sort of working on, which is terrifying for the others when you consider the speed that that thing, thing has. So Tony Bennett might have a big challenge for himself. Ollie Ball, you would kind of assume he's going to get into the run because in class A, you've got Bradley John in that Evo 9, yeah. Um, and the Roadrunner SR2 of Brent Hill that are out in Class A. I mean, I don't know if you... Have you actually listened to Bradley John's Evo 9 this year, the Mitsubishi? It's got a new sound this year, I'm sure of it. It's an amazing machine, isn't it? It's had a lot of reliability yeah. issues, as most of those Evos do. They do, they um, do don't they? <laughs> uh, but great, great to watch when they're going well. Um, I always uh, regret, in a way, it's not a standing start, because one of the... Highlights of me were seeing those go off on the standing start and just getting away from everything. He still um, manages to do it, though, in fairness. Yeah. Even from a rolling start, he's still able to do it. But you're absolutely right. But in fairness, there's a whole load of things that would just implode if they if they, uh, you know, were doing standing starts, isn't there? So I can get why it is. Class B... Who's impressed me this year is Doug Watson, actually. He's been going very well, driving when very he's, well. When he's out there, he was off for a little bit with a back problem, and of course he's running his lads in the uh, in the hot hatches as well. Yeah, uh, his sons Ben and uh, Robert Watson. Uh, he and they kind of take the focus. Even though he's on the list, we kind of hope that his back's okay and that he's not too focused with them. But in his Ferrari four five eight in Class C, absolutely, and good to see Jeremy Cook will be out in his M three GT four as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, the other cars, by the way, in Class B that I missed out, Tim Woodman, we know will be there. That would be great to see him out again. And Ruben Taylor in that Peugeot 206. And that's like a that's a silhouette as well, isn't it, of course? Yeah. yeah. Um, class D, Dave Tyson in that Hell Performance Volkswagen Golf. Class E, uh, Adam Perrett and Lewis Clark in their Clio and Ford Fiesta. And Dominic Shepard in one of my favourite cars, that Audi Super Tora GT. I adore that thing. Yeah, but a beautiful looking car, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's got the old gold wing doors, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, very, very nice. Amazing, Three. amazing Great. vehicle. Um, in terms of the the next one in my list is the Formula Fords. 25 cars. I mean, we got 11 Class A cars. Yes, it's a Formula Ford this year. I think it's been really, really come up again and uh, some excellent, really, truly excellent racing. And I just wonder whether... Um, we could get a new winner this weekend. I think it's time perhaps Luke Cooper came back to, to winning again. And um, obviously as well, Ben Mitchell, who was leading last time to unfortunately lost it coming out of the S's. Yeah. Um, but he was actually leading at the time, if you remember, um, and the Wayne Poole run uh, Van Diemen, um, a very accomplished racer, obviously in historic Formula Fords as well as these modern ones now. Um, so therefore, with Felix Fisher as well, um, and Oliver White, who's obviously had a great season so far, um, we can expect some more very, very close racing, hopefully. Well, and Adam Higgins is getting yeah. quicker and quicker in that uh, yeah. Furman that we I said from the get-go is that to start with, they were just trying to get that thing up to speed. It's getting there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he will, he will definitely offer a challenge when the car's there. Um, just quickly pick up on this because chris pearson says are the entry list going to be on the coon website as of now they already are mate ccracingclub.co.uk go to uh, the today's event and it's on the downloads they're already there for you to download um and they were as of sort of late afternoon so they're definitely there mate um yeah it's the usual usual suspects luke cooper vincent J, felix fisher tom hawkins matt hallam kieran atwood chris acton ben mitchell bob hawkins oliver white and adam higgins in class a class b nathan ward will be looking to keep his stranglehold on that against paul barnes sean macklin and sam street who looks promising uh sam street to be fair of course, the, uh, uh, paul Luke barnes Cooper. won the um heritage form the four second heritage form which he was absolutely delighted about i think it yes was a win for about 13 years no, uh, he was. So, um, and he's been going well this year as well. Agreed, totally. Class C, uh, <laughs> Richard Higgins, is he still, is he leading the way in Class C? Yeah. He was, yeah. yes, he yeah. is. He'll be looking to carry that on, but he's still got uh, James Colburn, Steve Bracegill, and Michael Phillips behind him. 
Mike Phillips, Richard Higgins, James Hadfield, Richard Earl, Paul Morecambe, James Colburn, Steve, Steve Bracegirdle. So seven in Class C. How cool is that? No. And yeah. then Class D, Alan Slater in that beautiful mic, uh, Mark IV, uh, Alicia Hamlin in the Royal RP36, and, of course, Bob Higgins leading Class D at the moment in the Macon 07. Yep, and he's won this class every time so far this year. He uh, has, indeed. I think we'll still see that battle eventually res sort of yep. resume with him yep. and Alan Slater, Alan. but he was a bit late, wasn't he? Yes. I'm just yep. going to very quickly do this because then it does allow me to just quickly run to the loo as well i'm just going to play this for two seconds <laughs> Good that we can take ad breaks, isn't it, eh? You know? <laughs> um, on to the uh, yeah. Saloon Car Championship. I mean, uh, I know that Mike's put in. It looks a bit sparse. It, it does by Saloon Car stand, Saloon Car Championship standards, but it's still going to be absolutely incredible. And and the, the championship, fi championship fight is, is well and truly alive. Alex Kite leading Class A at the moment, but it's... He, he's what does he sit third on 37 he's third overall because james keeping's leading class c yep. with 44 points so that gives him the overall lead uh and 43 points for mike good just one point back leading class d and then alex kite on 37 now james keeping he's not out i'm pretty certain he's off at uh, snetterton i think doing the c1s but Mike Good is out, so he's going to be looking to capitalise on that. But he's still got Anthony Weeks in particular, as well as Nick Mizzen, to, to try and keep him honest. It's going, to be, it's going to be intriguing still, isn't it? I mean, if you want to take us through the entry list for that, Clive. Yeah, sure. Um, Class A, I think, be very competitive. We've got Adam Preble and Gary Preble. Adam, obviously, in the Astra and Gary Preble in his uh, Leon Cupra. And Kevin Bird, who's uh, going very well, second in the class championship at the moment in his Nissan and Alex Kite, who, of course, was racing in the TCR very well the other week. A shame he had his little incident in the first race, but came back very well in the second one. And he um, was out in TCR again at Brands Hatch. Oh, was it? Two weeks ago, I think it was now. Um, but in a different car, it was in uh, the green Astra TCR, which was uh, quite a handful by all accounts. But it was great to see that uh, uh, he and Grant Motorsport were out there doing all of that again so you know it, it's really good and i spoke to kevin bird when we were at snet larks last weekend and i said what happened because his nissan 200 went up for sale oh, right. uh, at the beginning of the year and he went yeah he said i was gonna sell it and then he suddenly decided actually do you know what i don't want to and i want to race it in the saloons and i went correct answer <laughs> uh brilliant yeah yeah, he always goes uh, really well um so they're the four in class a so four very competitive drivers and cars there 
Class B, we've got Alexander Baldwin in his Honda Civic, which is racing for charity, 2021. Um, and at the moment, he's the only starter. We're missing Simon Thornton Norris and Neil Greenland, who are the class leaders at the moment. Yeah, um, I meant to, if yeah. I'd have clocked it, I'd have had a look to see if there's, a, I can't remember if it's time attack or or um, one, of, one of those things that they might be off doing that. I'm not sure. Interestingly, no. Tony Cooper said that, that James Keepin is racing at Coombe this weekend, but he's not on the entry list. Maybe he's a late, great runner. You would have thought he would want to try and uh, try and win the championship, wouldn't you? Being Absolutely. The leader. Yeah. yeah. So uh, hopefully he might still be there. Often we do get late entries, of course. Mm. Class C, we've got Mark Sutton, last year's champion, of course, in the MGZR. He's uh, currently second in class. Jake Alden in uh, the Citroen Saxo, JLA. They're hoping, they're hoping that they've sorted out the issues with that car now as well. Right. Um, and then we've got Ben Hindle, um, who's uh, on 32 points and uh, is leading the class, of course, in his Corsa, going very, I mean, very, very good in class. Second in class. Second, uh, sorry, who's uh, of course, James one, Keepin. yeah, James Keepin. Sorry, because he's not going, that's right, yeah. And apparently, basically, Ben Hindle, who obviously you're just talking about there, is he said that apparently Kipo accidentally cancelled but is entered. <laughs> That's, only Kipo could do that. <laughs> oh, I could do something like that. Don't worry, online. <laughs> no trouble. Um, and then we got three ZRMGs, which always go well. James Blake, who's having a good season. Joshua Harley and Lee Waterman. And then in Class D, um, on 43 points, just one behind James Keepins, Michael Good in his very quick, rapid Corsa, Anthony Weeks in the Saxo, and Nick Mizzen in the Fiesta. So, um, yeah, so it's, um, although not a huge grid, not as many as perhaps we used to get, still a very competitive one. It's I think still an really entertaining good. one, I think, as well, isn't uh, it? Yeah, it's going to be interesting because of the championship positions as well. And now we're getting, of course, a critical point in the season where two you know two races this weekend could actually more or less determine it potentially or make it a bit wide open of course we will see yeah absolutely i mean if you consider like say class a is that um you know <laughs> both the prebles have had bad luck this year and they, they're looking more promising as though they've turned that around now um when you consider adam got the the win in the last race Gary got the win in the race before that, but of course there's there's been sadly for them a degree of boom bust at the moment. You know, welcome to motor racing, I guess, isn't it? And how they deal with it, they're, they're more patient than me, that's for sure. <laughs> but of course, Kevin, um, you know, in the early stages of the of the championship, he was like leading the championship standings because he, he's just sort of been good good levels of consistency there. Alex Kite, we know that he's incredibly rapid in that Audi TT. Uh, took a year out last year from it and uh, and getting up to speed. And even if, you know, he's he's wily because even if he can't necessarily be, and he invariably is, but if he can't stay right at the front yeah. because the car needs to then sort of be cooled down and calmed down, he's there to pick up all the pieces every single time. Absolutely. He's a very, very quick driver. And I think, I don't think the car's quite as quick as the, the very quick is like the Preble cars probably um but he drives it so hard and as you say he's never far behind and is there um exactly. and, and if it's wet of course who knows as well yeah i mean he's got the double victory races one and two both on the 5th of april uh weekend yeah. uh, he's then got a second and a third in class so that's my point is he's just constantly there he's there and he's able to win he's able to pick up the pieces able to do whatever and that's what can win you the championships at the end yeah, that and, of course, fastest laps where you get um, a point for each race and, you know, over the season that can mount up and he, he's done quite well on that account as well, I think you'll find. For two of them, yeah. He's got two out of the four so far. You're absolutely right. Gary Preble's got the other one. Adam Preble's got the other one. Yeah. <laughs> so that shows it's um, a yeah, very competitive season. Um, it'd be nice to see more cars and hopefully, you know, as time goes on, we will. Um but of course, probably some have gone to hot hatch instead, no doubt. You know, or people who may have gone in the saloon car championship. Yes, uh, now, now thirty-seven gone. cars on the hot hatch grid. I mean, that is just incredible, and we still know that there's more out there. And it, but it's so good to see. If we look at Class A, Joe Dorrington, Will Self, Dan Brown's back. Yeah, he was a casco and karting champion, wasn't he? Um, now he's right? got the rare drivers. I got sent a commentator sheet this week. By oh, wow. Bird, 
Um, and I told her, I think that's the only one I've seen in the last <laughs> about six years. Allegedly, there's a folder somewhere, but I've not seen it myself. No, I've never seen it. No, I've never no. seen it. But no. Dan Brown, he raced, now I'm going to say last year, but it may well have been the year before with obviously last year being crazy. I've lost track. But he, out of the box, was just so quick. But sadly, his it's funds that have stopped him from being able to, to race constantly. That is a very impressive driver for me. Yeah. We, I think, I'm pretty sure we awarded him driver of the day or something yeah, like that. I think in his driver. first race he came second. Um, so, so impressive, really, very, really. And yeah. I hadn't actually clocked until this point. I'd gone through this list, but there's so many on this list. I'd missed this that Dan Brown's back. So apologies that I got excited uh, live on air there. <laughs> but uh, it, uh, Chris Pearson says, "Is Dan Brown that crazy quick Civic?" He, yeah. absolutely he's in a civic but that doesn't narrow it down really uh chris does it to be fair but he is tim adams and chris south got a back after their contretemps uh at quarry yeah. corner yeah well i know tim adams quite well because i um i'm a friend of nick adams his dad who was a c2 of course a world sports car champion um raced at le mans several times um in the spice and lots of other uh, formulas as well and Tim's proving he hasn't got a lot of experience, really. Um, he did race in America, actually, for a while. Just oh, for really? a year. Yeah. Um, but he's a really nice young lad and um, has been going exceptionally well this year. Um, really putting pressure on for sort of leading. Well, he won a race, didn't he? But uh, him and Southcott came to blows it, up at Quarry, didn't they? That I got the impression it may have been his fault. I don't know, but that seemed to be the rumor anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I saw the pictures and it looked like it. I mean, it was a it, it was a racing one, which I think what it eventually went down as anyway, kind of. But I it think was a racing incident. But uh, yeah. but it was probably yeah. Tim just just went a bit hot, and but I think there was South got was was sold that we couldn't tell whether you moved. I don't know all of that. Listen, that's racing. That's what we love. But my point being, the reason why I'm bringing it up us commentators get to stir up the pot, don't we? So. We get to see that race going again. Craig Tompkinson back in his Vauxhall Nova. So chuffed to see that. I really am because I love that car. Uh, really good, yeah. And then hopefully he's going to be back for the rest of the season with a bit of luck. So that'll be good. Kai Barker as well out in his Ford Fiesta. So great to see Kai out there as well. Class B, we know how ridiculously quick Sean Govard is in that Peugeot 106. Yeah. Um, Josh Harley. I'm trying to work out if that's a name new to me, but we saw him in the, he's racing out in the saloons as well. Ross Parker, great to see Slip and Grip Automotive boss Ross Parker's back out because there's been issues with that car that's put him out since the beginning of the year. And at one point he was having to sell the car due to family circumstances. But fingers crossed that means that we're going to see the, the old boy back out there uh, permanently, which would be good. The Puma of Mark Rogers, love that. I was chatting to him is that he's been involved in a couple of little moments that he kind of went, yeah, I kind of got a bit carried away. Yeah. Ex-oval racer, uh, but a great character. Honestly, I love speaking to him. He really is a wonderful character and, and a great addition to, to the... And it goes uh, well, that Puma, actually, doesn't it? It does go absolutely, well. Absolutely, absolutely. It stands out as well, doesn't it, nicely with the, the colours, a bright orange. Uh, Julian Ellison out in his Ford Fiesta in Class C. Paul and Lewis Bird. Paul the dad, Lewis the son. Great to see those two out there racing. Uh, both run by Grant Motorsport as well, looked after by Grant Motorsport. Dean Clayton in his Mini Cooper, Sean Deacon in the uh, in the yellow Peugeot 106. I think I saw pictures that that's had some work done it recently as well. Adam Wilkes in a Peugeot 106 GTI as well, car 143. That's new on me. Alex Bewley uh, and Amelia Vincent both in Class D in their Wiltshire College and University Centre Honda Civics. Yeah. Brilliant to see Amelia's first year of racing from memory as well on that one. And she's, she's Certainly, loving yeah. that and well. Class E, obviously the minis, we've got Dave Spiller, the ridiculously quick Grant Motorsport uh, mini and driver. Uh, Owen Hillman, pro alloys, Melksham. That's... Was he the guy who had the first race? Uh, we almost gave him drive of the day, but he had a yellow flag. Oh, penalty. Yeah, he yeah. did. He was absolutely amazing. Remember yeah. that son-in-law of Neil Greenland or something like that? Uh, it, yes, I think you're right. Yeah. Or stepson, stepson possibly. I can't remember. Something to that effect. Really yeah. impressive. Tim Daffin um, in the Benchmark Software run, Mini Cooper. James Camphor. Darren Duffield, he's been going wonderfully quick this year. Uh, great to see. Ryan Cook, Gary Franks. Class F, 
Mike Wyatt in the iTech Racing Honda Civic, Julian Fisher in the Fiesta, James Dyer buffed on. Great to see him back in his Honda Civic Type R. Ben Watson and Robert Watson, the uh, brothers in the pair of uh, Renault Clios. You'll hate that because they look identical, both white. Uh, Jamie Bigwood, good to see him out there. And it looks like they've done some serious work on that Clio. Tom Hall in a Clio as well. Mark Wyatt out in his Vauxhall Astra. John Barnard out in his Clio. Bradley Thurston and Steve Corner also both out in their Clios. 37 cars. Should be excellent. Should be excellent. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, that is just an absolute belter. Uh, I think that kind of previews the weekend well enough. We have no idea. Uh, Chris Pearson's asked, is Jordan Kerno out? Doesn't look like he's on the list. He's not on the list, no. Um, Which is a shame because he was right up the front as well and winning races and very quick driver. Um, Perhaps just to let everyone know, Chris, that um, Saturday the 3rd, um, there's a free practice session for all the Akeek cars at 830 and then um, qualifying from nine o'clock uh, up until one o'clock. There's then a lunch break between one and one forty-five. And on Saturday there are eight races: um, the the GT and Formula Ford, um, two races each from our championships. Then we have got the Classic Touring Car ninety-three and 03 class. They keep GTS, uh, the Great uh, Boss Thunder great race as well um and a, a keep libra um so they're the races on saturday sunday um there's just three qualifying sessions again starting 8 30 for the hot hatch the sports racing a double header race that were later on that day and the saloon cars um and then the first race is quite early so if any of you uh, are spectators coming along the first race actually starts at five to ten so much earlier than usual um but we got a staggering um 14 races on sunday um so the keep gts starts it off then we got 66 83 classic touring cars hot hatch the jaguar race a saloon car championship keep libra lunch then uh, sports racing classic touring cars 9303 hot hatch again boss thunder their second race the second saloon car race um, then 66-83, classic touring car race, second Jag race, and then the second sports racing uh, race, which concludes um, at six o'clock if it all runs to time. So I think um, the officials, marshals, uh, everyone <laughs> are going to have a very busy day. And um, it would be a very good feat if we manage to uh, get all that done by six o'clock. Yeah, exactly. And as Jed says, woohoo, 14 races, Orange Army will be busy. You will. And thank you in advance. I know you did that, Clive, in your message as well. Uh, it's going to be uh, absolutely incredible. The You can still turn up on the day and pay to get in. I think it'll be the normal thing. There'll be the uh, the barcode thing for you to, or the QR code, sorry, uh, to, to sort of take a photo and just register that you're there. If you're not able to do that with an app, try and get an app before you go so that you can you can log that um but you know if you can't do that then you need to give your details to them it is important we're still not out of the woods yet we need to do that we're getting so close we're getting closer we're getting closer we've all got opinions i know and sadly we're all of the same opinion but we can't do anything about it so let's just it is what it is we're getting close enjoy it keep yourself safe keep yourself spread you know other than your bubble you know two meters apart and sterilize your hands when you go in when you go indoors to like the loose put the masks on all that kind of stuff no entry to the paddock i'm afraid at the minute but you will be able to wander around the circuit uh i don't i would imagine it'll be the same thing though that you can't wander sort of across the front of the paddock because the um the that will be for the paddock to be able to come out and uh, and watch. So uh, that that will be that one. But enjoy it, guys, and uh, have a wonderful time. No, uh, just to pick up on the uh, Jed says what? No, Dorsey, not at all. I'm afraid I'm away this one. I'm missing this one. I'm off at Brands Hatch. Uh, Going to miss you at the weekend, Dorsey. But Clive will keep us entertained in place of you, Dilly Dilly. Thank you, uh, Tom. Tim. You- you will, won't you, mate? You'll keep it well. I'll do my very best. I'll do my you very best. You know you will. And Ian Salmon over on the other side as well. It's going to be a, a fabulous weekend. I look forward to hearing all about it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. It's It's been an yep. absolute blast. Thank you for your comments. It's, it does make a difference uh, for all of this. 
So from us, Clive, you're going to have a good one on the weekend by the sounds of it, mate. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight and uh, hope to see some of you uh, in the paddock on Saturday and Sunday. Absolutely. Not obviously only the competitors, not the spectators yet, but we're getting closer to that and I look forward to it. But uh, from us, thank you very much. Have a good evening and have a fabulous weekend at Castle Becoming Coon. a racing driver has never been easier with Castle Coon Circuit. Book your Ard's Novice Drivers training course at the Wiltshire venue today. The easiest and quickest way into competitive on-track action. <laughs> Welcome to Castle Coon. My name's Alan Cooper. I'm the, the Chief Driving Racing Instructor here at this circuit. We're here today to do the Novice Driver Training Course, often known as the ARDS course, which is the first way to start off and get your racing driving license. So, no further ado, let's get on and show you what's involved. <music> So you've seen the format. Everyone here today passed their tests and now have their racing license. Who knows, the next time I see them could be as I commentate on them in front of the usual packed house of racing fans here at Castle Coombe Circuit. All you need to do to be next is to visit castlecoombecircuit.co.uk and select Become a Racing Driver under the Racing tab. Becoming a Racing Driver is easier than you think with Castle Coombe Circuit and Motorsport UK.